Hey guys, what's going on? It's Osas from Samsung Galaxy S3 Soft Monitor, and today I'm going to be showing you how to control your Mac computer or laptop with um, your Samsung Galaxy S3. So for this, we're going to need Mac dot remote, which is the third one right here, and I'll also be going over Mac remote, which is actually what inspired a Mac dot remote. So of course, we're going to install that. Just go to the Google Play Store, search for Mac dot remote, no space. It's by Jacob. Swizik, that's what I'll say. Um, and then once you download it, we're going to open it up. And then from here, we're going to need to hop to our computer to find the username, the password, which is of course just the password that you set for your computer. If you do not have a password on your computer, you're going to need to actually make one for this to work. Um, so your username, your password, and then your IP address. And then once you have all that information, you just click connect and um, it'll actually connect to your computer. So I'm going to toss it over to the computer right now and show you guys how, how to find out this information. Alright guys, so I'm here on my Mac and as you see I'm going to go to Terminal. And so I just type in Terminal and Spotlight and then right there where it says OSAS MacBook whatever goes in front of the um, dollar sign is actually my username. So that's what I'm going to use when it asks me for that in um, the app. So we're just going to close that. Just rem remember, to, you can write that down or just leave terminal open. And now we're going to go to system preferences to open up the um, sharing. And this is where we're going to get the IP address. So you just tap in system preferences, head down to sharing. You're just going to tap on that. And then make sure that remote login is checked. So check on remote login. And then over to the right, we'll see that it says that it's on, green light, and then of course there's the IP address and remember that the dots are included so when you enter it back in on your phone um, make sure to have the dots and so there's your IP address so always make sure to have remote login on and look for it to the right and that's really it so now that I have the username which I got from my Mac and my password and IP address I can go ahead and enter that in so you know that my username was that. Uh, my password is, actually I forgot what my password is. I think it is. So that's my password and then my IP address, which again, on your Mac you can find, if you go to settings, sharing, and then remote login. So you will need the periods as well, so don't forget to enter those in. and then hit done and right here where it says connect we're going to hit connect and then it should start connecting so now that it's connected if I push this play button it will actually open up iTunes on my computer but let me just show you guys the, the kind of the runaround so you can go to app management right here if you tap on the little menu icon right there with the three vertical dots and it'll jump in here and here are the apps that you have by default and if you don't want to use so let's say you don't have keynote or you don't have a VLC player all you have to do is drag that to not used drag it down to not used and then it will not show up in your um, your app management you can also add an app but again note that it only the interface only uses the these buttons so if you add Google Chrome you're not really going to actually be able to do anything. So you should stick to media apps or apps that will actually make use of the play, back, forward buttons. So that's why these are mostly media things. And then iPhoto, you can start a slideshow, as you can see right here. And then switch apps. Of course, you just jump into that menu right here, and you can switch from different apps. And you can see that the buttons do not change, but the names do change. And that's it. And then over here is the um, the power buttons for your laptop or your desktop. So you can increase the brightness. So I'm just going to show you guys that. So I'll swoop over my laptop right here. And then try and get both of them in frame. Alright guys, so now I have my MacBook right in front of me. And I'm just going to show you what happens. So if I hit play right here with iTunes. I'll hit play, and you can see my Mac. Even better than I was the last time, baby. So, let's put that on mute, but you can see I didn't touch 
my computer and it's playing a song. So right here, if we look up, you can see the play. Now if I, on my phone, if I push pause, you can see right there that it paused. Let's try that again. Push play again. And then since it's on mute, you guys can't see, but I can control the volume. So you can see. And again, I'll pause it. So that's kind of pretty much just the breakdown of how the app works. You can control your computer. I'll show you guys the system settings as well. So of course, when you, we hit this button right here, so I want to decrease or increase. You guys see it right there working. I'm going to decrease the brightness, you know, and you can also put it to sleep and turn it off. So if I wanted to do that, of course, I would hit this. You see that it's asking me, but I don't want to turn it off, but that is how it works. And that's really it. Um, I can also show you guys the Mac remote. So instead of Mac.remote, it's Mac remote. It's the same exact thing. So it's right here. This actually inspired Mac.remote. Um, and this is a little, a little different. The interface isn't as clean, I think, and it also has ads as you can see right there. But again, you can control your computer, brightness. I haven't connected yet, so in order to connect, it's going to be the same exact thing. This actually saves your information, so I hit connect right there. Um, and then you can see right there, it says you have connected successfully. So now, of course, <clears throat> I'm increasing and decreasing the brightness of my screen, like so. And then I can go here, again, just similar to Mac.remote, and control iPhoto. So I'll tap on that. iPhoto should start if I push play. There you go. So you see that it, it just connected. It takes a little while. I don't know. iPhoto is kind of slow. But anyways, you can, of course, start a slideshow, go back, go forth. So you see right here, it's going to load up a slideshow. And then I can just click on this to go to the next next image, next image, next image. And of course I can pause it or stop it like so. So I mean that's that's the same thing, it's the same exact thing. This does um, actually have a file browser, but in order for you to use that tool, you need to purchase the full version. And that will cost you $2.04. So if you just want to control your volume, your normal apps like PowerPoint or iTunes or iPhoto, then you of course would need the upgrade. So there's Mac.remote, which is a cleaning user interface, which I kind of like a little bit more. And then there's Mac Remote, which actually allows you to control PowerPoint, which the other one doesn't. So just make sure to check out both of those. They're both free in Google Play. Um, and you can start controlling your Mac computer. So make sure to um, check out the full tutorial if you need any more information and screenshots as well as another walkthrough on how to actually set it up for both applications. And um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So thanks for watching, guys.